I'm going to assume that you have created your floor plan and you have placed your dimensions already on it and that you've created both the floor put in the doors and windows and you've also created the floor framing. This is our layer combinations pop-up menu so we can choose all and we can see absolutely everything. So I can see the roof, I can see the rafters, I can see absolutely everything that's going on with this plan. If I change here and look at my floor plan, so plan floor, I can just see my floor plan information. If I change to look at floor framing, I can see my floor framing. You notice my dimensions have all disappeared. So let's just have a look. We want to create a floor plan drawing. So ArchiCAD uses a specific way to create drawings. So the first thing we do is we set the view the way we want, making sure that we've got our layer combinations, that we have our partial structure, that we've got this part set correctly, and we've got our pen set. So I'll go through those one at a time. So first of all, we do our plan set, yeah, floor plan. What do we want to see? We want to see our entire model. We want to use our pen set. This is preset for us, so it's pretty easy to, to choose the correct pen set. What do we want? Do we want exterior? We really want building plans with markers for our floor plan. So you can see my window markers turn up. And when they turn up, you'll now notice that my dimensions are in conflict. If you don't see your markers, we can turn those off. For this simple project, markers may not be necessary. Here we've got our floor framing plan. This is a, a pen overrides that we've got. So we're going to use our floor framing plan as our override. That should be fine. And we'll leave the renovation filter completely alone. So we go through, get everything looking the way we want. On screen, yes, perfectly. It does look the way we want. Now the next thing is we go to the tab at the top here, just here where my cursor is, right click and we're going to save as view. So it'll store a view and then we place the view onto a sheet of paper and that's how we create drawings. So the first step is we have to save a view. So I'm going to call this by its custom name which is my floor plan. So here's my floor plan its ideas at the top so you might notice that it's actually stored all the things that we've covered down the bottom we can change these if we want uh, right now so we don't have to do them first it's just easy to do them first so let's create that and now on our navigation palette this is our project map this is how we go between different parts of our project these are our saved views and you'll now notice I've got one here called floor plan, number one floor plan. And I can drag that and I can drop it into that folder there and it'll put all of my plans together in the same folder. This is our layouts. So we have layouts here. Layouts are where we create our actual drawings. And if I double click on cover page, there's our actual drawing. It's got a title block on it and the title block picks up the name that you type in when we set up the project. We'd like to create a new drawing. Drawings are called layouts, so we have to click on the plus button down the bottom to create a new layout. So this is our plan drawings. Because of the size of a building, we can put more than one plan on here. And I'd like you to use the A3 Landscape Master. Click on Create. So there is our plan drawing. We can zoom in. So how do the saved views and the layouts work together? Well, let's go back to our saved views on our view map. Grab hold of your floor plan saved view, drag it onto your layout for the plans and let go. And there is our plan layout on our piece of paper. Now at 1 to 50, our project is actually quite small, but it is a small project. So that's how we create our first drawing. Now you might notice that our title block isn't filled in correctly because it's got the missing details of the client's name and the project. So now it's time for us to fill in the information about this project. File on the menu bar. We're going to go to Info and choose Project Info. When you choose Project Info, it opens this dialog box where we can put in information that will appear on our title block. 
So for example, if we come down to find the client details, so that contact company, that's you. So I'm going to put in my name. And we're also going to put in contact full address at some point. But what we need to quickly do is the project name. So this is our non-consent project. And the project description we might not need. We need to put in the client's full name here, otherwise it will appear just like that. But let's just click OK and see what happens. Now you'll notice that my name has changed, so Jonathan's now changed, and also the non-consent project has changed. So just go through that project info and fill in all the information you need. So we've got our first floor plan. How do we do the next drawing? Now let's go back to our project map and we'll go back to ground floor by double clicking and we need to create our floor framing plan. So there it is there, it's all set up ready to go. It needs some notes and some annotation, but let's go back to here and we will set this up as a view. So save as a view. And one of the cool tricks you can do with this is you can say, restore my current zoom, which is quite handy. So this was custom, this is our floor framing. Floor framing plan. And create. So if we go back to our layout book, that's this one here. Let's have a look at our plan. This one here. And it says that it's an A1 plan drawing. So let's just change that to O1. Plan drawings. And we need our save view. So we've got our floor framing. So I'm going to move that to there. Drag that into here. And that's our floor framing plan. Ideally they should line up. So I'm going to grab that by its corner. You can see the little tick next to my cursor. Touch that corner of my building. I get the little circle. And I can pull that down, let go, and click. So that's now lined that up. You'll notice that there's a green border goes all the way around my saved view. If I click on this black dot, my node, I'll get a series of options. So this one is to adjust the frame. This one is to move the node. If I move the node, you'll see that it's adjusted it in that way. It's not what I wanted. If you click here, choose the adjust frame and then you can crop your frame much more tightly to your building making sure you leave room for the annotation that you put on here you can see it's quite tightly cropped if i go to that edge and click i can adjust the frame and i can move out and i can actually touch the view that i've got below so that my two labels actually line up floor plan floor framing plan. So that creates my floor plan and my floor framing plan. Now let's look at creating sections and elevations. So I click on my tab here. I'm back at my plan. I want to create a section so I'm going to look at everything. So show all. And now it's time to create an elevation. If you have information that you don't want to see, one of the techniques you can do is to select the object, right click, Go to Layers and hide the layer, and that will turn off those objects that are on that layer. We'd like to create an elevation first, so a couple of elevations, one front elevation, a side elevation, and a section, I think is all we need. So Document on the menu bar, Documenting Tools, and you'll find an Elevation Tool here. You'll also find these Documenting Tools here on your tool set. So this is the elevation tool here. So click to, to activate that tool. So click to start. Drag across the front of your building. I've got the shift key down to hold it to constrain that elevation. Click. Which way do we want to look? We want to look that way. Click. And that's created a elevation. Let's create another one from there down to here. And you might notice that that one's not very accurately drawn, so I'll just do that one again. Shift key held down to make sure that it's accurate. Click. And there are my two elevations. Now it hasn't created the saved views for those yet, so we have to activate them. So first of all, select your elevation marker. Right click on that and we'll go to 
open with current view settings. And there's my elevation. Right click, save as view, and this is my front elevation. We'll current zoom, create, and now we'll go back and do the other elevation. So this one here, so select that one, right click on the elevation, open with current view settings. There's my elevation. Right click, save as view. So this is my right elevation. Let's current zoom. Let's create that one as well. So I now have these two side views. If I go back to my layout, here's my layout. Double click on my layout to open my drawing. I can then grab my elevations and drag them onto my plan and there they are. Remember we've got this ability to stretch the edge to bring that in and this one here as well bring that one in and you might want to bring that up as well bring up the bottom part and bring down the top part of that save view. Let's go back to this one here the right elevation let's bring that one in there it is there, so select it, drag that in, and drag this one in, drag the top down, and there are my two elevations. Now it might be that it's easy to put your elevations down here and have your plan lining up with this one here. So I just want to wait for that little blue circle to arrive, and then I can line up and put those two there. So I now have a plan of the foundations, I've got a plan of the, I have a plan of the floor, and I have my elevations. Now these two elevations don't line up at the moment, so I need to make sure they do. So I'll just zoom in, grab that elevation, make sure I touch that point there, and make sure those two line up. Then I can separate them. If you click on the black dot in the middle, the node in the middle, it makes it easy to drag those along. We can use the technique which is Control D or Command D, and that way you can just click and drag that along, hold your Shift key down, and constrain those that way. Bottom here, I want that to line up with that point there, and there they are. Now I'm just not going to worry about this back referencing that we've got shown here, I'll fix that later. At the top here, you'll notice that the edges of my crops don't line up, so I'm just going to make sure I line those up, so that way my labels will line up. So that has created my floor plan and a couple of elevations. I'm going to move that across because I want to create a section and place it here. Back to my floor plan. I'm going to use my section drawing. That's my section tool here. I want to cut my section through here. So starting at that point, come all the way down. I can create a straight section or I can create a section with steps in it. I'd like to create just a straight section for this one, so come down to here, click, look that way, click once more, and there's my section. If I right click, so select my section, right click on it, and I can open with the current view setting, there it is there, and I can right click up here, save as a view, so this is my section A, current zoom, create, now let's have a look at my layout, so there's my layout, and there's my section, drag my section on, make sure I line those bits up, and then just stretch my view across the crop part so that they all line up. So stretch that across, and stretch that one down to there, stretch this one up so it lines up the one at the bottom, and bring that side in, and there's my sections. Two elevations, section, two plans, all on one piece of A3, and don't forget to save your file.